Assalamu alaikum wa rahmah. We'll end there. How's everyone going? Uh, you know what it is. Of course you guys do. I mean, you guys have your TVs on, uh, opening live uh, on Facebook. And goes, you guys can go check us out right there. But we're coming to you live from the holy city of Karbala, of course, with your favorite uh, show and your favorite host, Ahmed Ali. But tonight, uh, we are talking about something very great, something very um, influential both on the personality on and on the mentality of an individual. You're going to find out my entire nation, nation of hashtag LNT. You're about to find out, but let's go check out what's trending. And we'll be back very, very short. Mo Salah versus Cristiano Ronaldo, or should I say versus uh, Bale, or should I say versus the Savage who kicked him out of the game early on, um, Sergio Ramos. I mean, this guy had to bring Mo Salah down to end the game. When he came out, when he went out, the game was done. But, you know, uh, but that bicycle kick was deadly. That bicycle kick killed it. That's it. It ended it. But if you guys are watching the game, it was actually a live game. Um, so my condolences, uh, my deepest condolences uh, to those who uh, are fans of Liverpool. Uh, and congrats, Real Madrid. 13 games, only five uh, times Liverpool won. Uh, but, you know, life goes on. Hopefully next year you guys can win it. But another uh, interesting topic that uh, the Middle East is facing uh, or especially Iraq is facing for the first time or uh, m maybe it will face uh, the tropical cyclone um, Mikuno. Now this is a, a, a storm that hit Oman on Saturday um, as a category 3 hurricane equivalent to a storm. Now dumping the two years worth of rain. This is crazy. It went to Yemen killing more than 30 people uh, Sorry, five people, uh, but 30 people are missing. Um, so hopefully they can reunite with their families, but hopefully it doesn't reach Iraq. 100 miles per hour. 100 miles is like a hundred and less than 160 kilometers per hour. That's crazy. But wow, I mean, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully everyone can, um, you know, recover from that and no uh, severe damage to anyone. But let's go and jump into tonight's topic, but after this very short break. When you're born in a country, let's say France for instance, you're French, no duh, but if your parents are originally from French, from France, then you're fully French, again, no duh, but if you're born somewhere else or your, your, your parents are from somewhere else and you come, you immigrate to, to France, then you're half French. Uh, and again, no, duh. But being French and living in France, you can say that you're pretty much a patriot towards that country, towards France. Now, if you were asked, you know, where you're from uh, or people ask you where you're from, Raphael, typical French name, um, you stand out proudly and say that I am French or you're French. Now that's something that you're proud of, you know, being a patriot of your country. As soon as someone an asks you the question, you don't hesitate, I'm from that country, I'm from that country. You know, you, you, you need to hold that uh, thought in your mind. But it feels good when someone actually uh, holds the name of their country wherever they go. You know, uh, because the country, and it shows everyone that you're interacting with or telling that uh, your country has done a lot for you. It, it, it made you grow. But we have, on the other hand, some of those who immigrated to the West, when they're asked where they're from, some might hesitate and say a different country because they feel like that country hasn't done anything to them. And hasn't provided them with anything so they say a different country just to try to fit in now they feel like their country shouldn't be loved and respected and you know honestly um, I, I, I've met one or two people like that and it's sad 
uh, because uh, as we'll get to talk about later on in the show, it's not about the country, it's, the, it's about the person that contributes to that country. But that brings us to tonight's question. Tonight, hashtag LNT, along with the world, wants to know, should you love your country? That's your question for tonight. Should you love your country? If you think yes, pick up the phone right now, open WhatsApp and dial the number shown right here, plus 964 774 067 1836. And if you also think no, still do the same process. Open your phone, go to WhatsApp, and dial that same number again. You can send us a voice message, a text message, free call via WhatsApp, or you can go check us out on Facebook. Um, comment there, like, share for your names. We'll be placed in this bowl right here, written on these sticky notes, and placed in this bowl right here for a chance to win a free ziyara to Karbala, along with many, many, many. Uh, giveaways. The final draw will be on Eid, so you guys have to tune in all the way up until Eid. Once again, we do say that hashtag LNT is live every night at 2 a.m. Karbala time. But let's take a very short break. Let me catch some water and we'll be back very short. Welcome back, dear viewers. Once again, it's Ahmed Ali coming to you live from the holy city of Karbala on hashtag LNT, the late night talk with you guys. And tonight, we're trying, about, we're trying to talk about something very important. We're trying to talk about your love to your country, that love. So what you guys have to do is open WhatsApp, down the number shown right there at the bottom, plus 964-774-067-1836, and answer this question. Should you love your country? Now, we'll give you some of the, um, the research that we have gathered together um, so to, to show you that should you or should you not love your country. Now, loving country doesn't mean that, or does, doesn't just mean that you're from that country or you're born in that country. Loving your country is basically as much as picking up a can of soda, empty can of soda on the ground or any small trash on the ground, Kleenex, anything picking it up and throwing it in the garbage can. Making your country look cleaner, just like you would do at home. And if you're not clean at home, hopefully everyone is, but if you're not, then, uh, then you, need to, uh, you need to do something about it. But um, if, if, if you were to go in and, and look at other ways of how people share their love towards their country, in soccer games, your soccer games, you know, World Cup is just around the corner, and uh, we see fans uh, picking up the flag of their country, painting the flag of their country over their face, um, you know, just to support their country. And of course, if uh, your country qualified, uh, and if they didn't, just drop them. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, you know, you can go for, for hopefully for the next four years to do that. But we do have a call from Hussein from Iraq. Assalamu alaikum, welcome Hussein. Uh, and tonight, uh, the question is, should you love your country? Um, hello, Mr. Ahmed Ali. How are you doing? Good Alhamdulillah. Morning. Alhamdulillah. Good evening to you as well. And welcome to hashtag LNT. Now, the question for tonight is... Thank you so much is, for having me. No problem. So I, 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 I know I hear your question. <laughs> All right, good. I answer. would say that um, if the, the country provides the basic human rights, that doesn't mean it's a democratic country. Mm hmm for example, uh, the uh, the North Korea North Korea uh, provides the basic human rights to its own citizens, but that doesn't. It's a democratic country, right? Mm -hmm. We can we can debate so, that. I think the person who feels that feels, uh, feels the affiliation to his country, everyone, everyone should do that mm -hmm. because he, he feels the affiliation to its, uh, to his own um, uh, like land. Um, in Iraq, we we have to our country. We have to feel the um, uh, like we feel that we are part from our country, and we have to. Yeah, on the whole, we should love our countries. But uh, my, my note is that not all the countries uh, uh, which provide the basic human rights that we should call it a democratic country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much yes. for joining us tonight. Um, and you know, a couple of points you mentioned there. 
um, they're, they're very good as well. But thank you very much for joining us once again. Now, Hussein's name will go into the bowl, inshallah, at this moment. Yeah, for the participants that, that are uh, living in Iraq, um, you know, uh, you know, br bringing you to Karbala is just like a, a road trip down down the street. So K. Ahmed will bring you down here, but I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, but you know, uh, but well, but there are other giveaways, and if your name does come out, then we'll probably do something about it. I'm kidding. Uh, if it, then that, that that that's just fair play. Uh, <laughs> okay, no. Uh, your name's Hussein right there. Okay, thank you very much Hussein for joining us tonight. Now, um, before we got that call, we were talking about how uh, the different ways that people can uh, love their country. Uh, and uh, one of the most important things about loving a country uh, is, is actually uh, supporting that country and making everyone know that you're from that specific country. Now, we were talking about soccer and the World Cup, but one of the ways that, you know, sometimes when an individual doesn't really feel that love towards his country, if he goes on a trip, a road trip, or uh, to a different country, you know, let him stay for a couple of weeks or a couple of days for some people. Then, as Iraqis say, I miss the smell of Iraq. Basically, what they're trying to say, homesick. That's what they're trying to say. But loving a country can go as far uh, as dying for a country. You know, if, if, if we were to go through the different world wars, everyone was a patriot, patriot towards their country because they didn't want their country to be affected by war. And if we were to come to modern day wars, the war against ISIS, Iraqis, the Iraqi soldiers, they volunteered. They're the ordinary people who sell tea on the streets, who have shops, who are taxi drivers, who are even in, in, in good jobs, sustainable jobs, yet they gave that up loving their country and of course protecting the holy shrines in Iraq. But we just have received a voice message from Farhad Azizi from Canada. In most cultures, a country is like a mother. They call it motherland. So it is very important to love your country as you love your mother. Mm -hmm. This is Farhad Azizi from Canada. Thank you very much, Farhad. And, and uh, so your name was previously written and placed in here. But thank you very much. Uh, thank you for participating again. And uh, very uh, good point you mentioned there as well, comparing uh, a country uh, to, uh, to to a mother, and it's it's very important for that. Um, we'll get some of the um, other segments, Allah, very soon. Uh, but uh, if we were to go back before uh, that uh, voice message, we were talking about how people they're in love with their country they're willing to sacrifice everything they have and basically everything they have is their life that's all they have the money comes and goes the cars comes and come and go houses come and go but a life when it goes it's not coming back when people sacrifice that much for a country then it's very important to take that into consideration because that's very important at the same time now let's go back a little bit to the question i asked you guys earlier should you love your country now, there's something you guys have to understand, and that's there's a difference between a country and a nation. What's the difference? We define what the love for the country uh, is, but many of us can't really differ between a country and a nation. And how does a country differ from a nation? Well, a nation doesn't have to be the place that you're actually born in. You know, your, your motherland, is where you're born in or your motherland is where your ancestors or your, your mother and father is from but a nation is the one that takes you in educates you is the one that helps you strive um, at the same time you can love both uh, but we'll get to talk about that later on inshallah we do have uh, coming up for us uh, the public opinion or, or the text message okay let's sister from fuzzy moon 
uh, from Trinidad. She says, yes, you should be proud of your country. You're living even if you, was, if you were not born there. Okay, thank you very much, Fazi Moon. Uh, from Trinidad, your name was also placed in this bowl. So inshallah, uh, we'll let everyone participate. And we do thank you for participating tonight. Uh, now, let's go and check what the public has to say about tonight's question. Should you love your country? Of course. So uh, my country would be, uh, back home would be Iraq. I love that with a passion as it's uh, a nation um, that's striving and prospering. And at the same time, uh, the UK as well. That's my country. They're the people that, you know, welcomed us in and helped us and educated us. And yeah, definitely. You should have a because it's your country, you know, so it's where you're representing. Because it's where you've been born and it's, it's where you belong. We are in a world where society is changing rapidly and we are injected with disruptive politics which is infiltrating among us and destroying the harmony and peace. And I believe that each country is fighting against these odds to keep the nation intact and cater to better healthcare which in turn leads to better economy. So for us it's very important to love yourself and the people around you and of course your country. To end this I would like to quote what John F. Kennedy once said, ask not what country did to you. Ask what you can do for your country. Thank you. Once again, thank you very much for, for those who have uh, joined us tonight from the public opinion and gave us their opinion on tonight's topic. Everyone agreed with tonight's question. Uh, but uh, we do remind everyone for uh, lending it. Give me this camera here. Give me this camera here. I don't hear the phones ringing. Well, I actually do. Uh, they're, they're coming in right now. But pick up the phone right now. Open WhatsApp. Um, because honestly, I have a question for you guys alongside this right here, should you love your country. Don't you guys want to come to Karbala? For free. We're not trying to say that, you know what, you know. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a good chance that you might come to Karbala. Uh, but all you have to do is open WhatsApp. Dial the number shown at the bottom right there, plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six, and let us know what you think about tonight's question. Should you love your country? That's the, that, that's your question for tonight. But um, before the break, we were talking about the difference between a nation and a country, and we came to the conclusion that they're different. They're not the same. Uh, they're not similar in any way. Maybe some ways, but not in all ways. Now, for instance. You know, w when I was in Canada, uh, I knew a lot of Pakistani friends. And even in Karbala, uh, I still know a lot of Pakistani friends because they come to Karbala, they, they text me and, and so on and so forth. But um, one thing that's actually very beautiful about those who come to Karbala from, from a different country, they say that Iraq is our second country, if not the country that we love the most, you know, or, or, or their nation. Now, I know an individual, Dr. Zakaria Abbas, shout out to him. Uh, this individual, every day, he comes to Karbala more than three times a year, uh, two to three times a year. And when he does come to Karbala, he has initiatives in Karbala. And uh, he says that Iraq is my second home. So he doesn't feel that he is homesick. And this actually is very important for anyone that visits, that visits another country that signifies something. When you visit Iraq, you're basically visiting the holy shrines. Um, there are some nice sites out there, but you're basically visiting the holy shrines in Iraq. And when you're here, um, you feel like the connection between you, the shrine, automatically strength, strengthens the connection with you and that country that you're visiting. Now, um, let's... Uh, let's go see what the expert has for us tonight. Uh, Dr. Hussain Al-Rumaythi joining us once again on hashtag al -NT. To him. Uh, should you love your country? Uh, regardless of the label you may want to give to the notion of love in your country. 
whether it's uh, uh, nationalism, uh, patriotism, or just simply just calling it uh, loving your country. Uh, this topic has been colluded with uh, different variables. Uh, see, the, prob uh, the primary answer would be definitely everyone must love their uh, country. And uh, I would ask, what kind of question is this? Um, it's my country. I was born here. I was raised here. I studied here. I got married here. I'm working here, and etc. But uh, what if you were not born? and raised uh, in the country you're in right now. Or uh, in another word, uh, that you're a naturalized uh, citizen. See, I want to, I want to refer to, uh, to the commander of faithful, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi, where he says, um, the best land is the one that carries you. Uh, what does he mean by saying carries you? Uh, it means actually it's the land that provides for you uh, and made the tools and the means uh, for you growing up and becoming a, a beneficial member of the society uh, available. Uh, although one might say that uh, providing these means uh, uh, is, this, uh, you know, is the responsibility of any state uh, so they're not doing anything special. Uh, I would, uh, I would say, you know what? Uh, yeah, true. But uh, there are many places around the world where the simplest necessities uh, of life uh, are absent, and they're considered a privilege for a few. Uh, therefore, uh, the land that uh, provides those essentials. Uh, for you uh, and further, furthermore, makes make sure that you are well taken care of uh, is your home. Imam Ali actually says, uh, loving, uh, um, the Arabic hadith says, الوطن من الإيمان, loving your land uh, is, is, uh, is of faith. See, uh, and uh, therefore, uh, it's, uh, it's a simple question, it's a simple answer. But at the same time, uh, I'd like to actually return to the, uh, to the point that I made at the beginning about um, uh, the notion of loving your country and all the labels attached to it being, uh, being clouded. Uh, what I mean by that actually, due to uh, globalism and this world uh, turning into what some have called uh, the universal village, and the no, uh, uh, village, the notion of uh, nationalism and love for country has lost its uh, glow and radiance. Uh, multinational corporations, social media, TV, cinema, uh, dominant cultures, etc., have cooled down the notion of um, nationalism and this tendency. Uh, to adopt globalism, multiculturalism, uh, has been worrisome for some, unfortunately. Therefore, we have uh, we've been witnessing the rise of populism, uh, or uh, what I call, what I like to call, neo-nationalism, and, uh, and the rhetoric uh, there is um, uh, inflammatory at best, if I want to be polite. Uh, therefore, these uh, these topics actually may may seem very simple. We may think that yeah, you know, I love my country. You know, everyone loves his uh, you know his country. Uh, but um, I would just end with uh, with saying that uh, it might be a lot uh, more complex and uh, needs further dissection. But definitely, everyone, everyone must love their country, whether the country that you were born, whether you, uh, whether the country that you uh, currently live in, and um, wish the best for everyone. <laughs>
Once yeah. again, thank you very much, Hassan uh, Ramayathi, for joining us tonight. Uh, very interesting topic and very interesting points you mentioned there. Uh, so uh, a big shout out to you, uh, Mr. Hassan, Dr. Hassan Ramayathi. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us tonight. Now, before the break, well, not break, but before we're talking uh, to uh, Hassan Ramayathi, we were, we were discussing um, uh, the ways, various ways that you can love a nation or you can love a country uh, and you can love them both at the same time. But we do have a call from Musa from Iraq. Assalamu alaikum, welcome to hashtag Al Anti. Hello, Mr. Ahmed Ali. Hello, hi. Yeah, welcome to hashtag Al Anti. And tonight's question should you, you love your country? Yeah, I love my country so much. And I love Iraq very much. And I love you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I love you too. I love you too. And, and, yeah. and Iraq, Iraq loves you as well. Iraq is a very good country. Um, uh, and and Bia and Balad al Turat. Allah. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Musa, for joining us tonight. Very, uh, it's 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 actually very nice. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's 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 very nice to find someone that can you know really connect to his country as we find Musa from Iraq. Thank you very much, Musa, for joining us tonight. Uh, your name will be M O U S A uh, Musa Iraq. P ten. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Musa from Iraq, for joining us tonight. Right there. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, well, yeah, if, if you see me laughing, don't think I'm going crazy. Uh, I just get these random uh, messages or th th these random comments in my ear. But um, we have two minutes left. Now, the third segment for today... Um, is all about the Islamic point of view uh, about the topic. And when we, t when, when we look at this question right here and how Islam analyzes it and gives us a proper um, answer, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions that loving a nation or loving a country is embedded within religion of Islam. Now, we have a lot of narrations, a lot of... Um, uh, traditions from the Ahlul Bayt, especially from Prophet Muhammad and the Imams, uh, they say that the best land or the best nation is the one that takes you in. At the same time, a few a, a few episodes ago, we talked about uh, migration, uh, and one of the most beautiful things that we mentioned at the end of the episode um, is that seek knowledge even at, in China. Seek knowledge even if in if even if it's it's in China. So. Love your nation and love the nation that you're living in as well, uh, which is very important because uh, you need that love because that nation or that country is giving back to you. So what you have to do is give back to that country. Now, we do remind everyone for joining us tonight. This is Ahmed Ali coming to you live from the holy city of Karbala on the late night talk every night of Ramadan up until Eid. We are live at 2 a.m. Karbala time, 12 a.m. Uh, London time, 7 p.m. DC time. Once again, thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Take it easy.